All right, for this episode of Wayne's Work Vlog, we're going to finally tackle this cam angle sensor O-ring. Spoke about it in a previous video. Definitely want to get the Viton O-ring because it is oil and heat resistant. It'll feel kind of oily. It's the one you want though. And then we're going to pull the CAS off, the CAS, the cam angle sensor O-ring. I'm going to try and do it the easy way without removing the valve cover. Normally you want to do the valve cover and the CAS all at one time, but sometimes you may have already done the valve cover gasket and then the CAS starts leaking. So you don't want to have to pull it all off just to do it again. The best way to know if you need a cam angle sensor o-ring and not a valve cover gasket the valve cover gasket goes right in this crack here and you can see there's no oil anywhere around it but as you get to the back you kind of notice there's all this oil build up right around the back here right behind the oil dipstick that is the CAS o-ring leaking you definitely want to get that replaced because the oil as you can see down on the transmission will leak between the block and the transmission itself getting all over the clutch plates you'll notice this because when you go to take off you'll have a lot of clutch slip you may even smell oil burning during clutching or during normal driving while the car is heating up you'll see smoke coming out from around the firewall area that's the oil actually getting onto the exhaust manifold and being burned up by the clutch this will destroy your clutch obviously because it'll allow not only the clutch pads to become saturated and break down the material that holds the clutch pad together but it also creates hot spots on your flywheel surface and this can cause cracks heat spots you'll feel a vibration when the clutch engages that's from hot spots just like you get on your rotors when you power brake and you end up getting that shuddering in the steering wheel that's from hot spots being developed in the rotor the clutch is the same thing as your rotor and brake pads just reversed instead of there being a metal rotor in the middle with two fibrous pads on either side there's a fibrous pad in the middle with two metal rotors on either side of that fibrous pad so oil getting on it is obviously bad just like with your brake pads you don't want oil on the rotor or the pads after you get done changing them same thing with this clutch and flywheel as i said before we're going to try and do it the easy way which means do not take off the valve cover what we're going to actually have to do it's kind of hard to see behind all these wires here once we get these disconnected there's an adjustment bolt down there and this cover here can come out of the way a little bit so we're going to loosen that 12 loosen that 12 take it completely out and then it should just pop right out the back so first things first let's get these wiring harnesses out of the way try not to break these they are going to be fragile from the heat All right, once the wire harness is out of the way, you can kind of see a little better that adjustment bolt right there. That's the main one that has to come out. Now, before you do this, if you've watched any of the other videos, you're going to want to scribe across this bracket here so that you can see where your timing is at. And if you're gonna reset the timing, then this isn't entirely necessary, but you definitely wanna do this if you wanna be able to put this back together with your timing exactly the way it was. If your timing's fine and your car's running fine, then just scribe it and you can put it right back where it was. If, however, you are going to be setting the timing, then that's not entirely necessary. I just do it no matter what so that I can at least get back to a baseline so that I know where I can safely start the car to readjust the timing later. So even if you're doing the timing, it's smart to do this. Next, I'm gonna loosen the 12 millimeter holding this bracket in place that locks this bolt down. These two bolts do not have to be removed and it's best to leave them in because there is some silicone sealant that goes around in here and breaking these off can damage that sealant and then you will need to remove the valve cover to replace that sealant. Little trick for getting a wrench that has a little too much torque on it or too short in a tight area, let's put another wrench on it and then you can actually press down on the two wrenches together and that'll help you at least just break loose that initial torque once you get this 12 loose you should be able to just swing that bracket out of the way now this other 12 is kind of deep in here so you may need a little help with an extension can't really get a ratchet in there so just kind of get the wrench on and then again use your wrench extension like i showed you in the last spot and just get that initial break and then you can get in there and loosen it the rest of the way be careful because there are some washers on this adjustment bolt and this is also only for a 1.8 the 1.6 cas is actually on the intake side 
Now with the adjustment bolt out, you should be able to freely spin and slide out the CAS itself. Very gently maneuver it until you can get it free. And that's why having that bracket out of the way helps. Getting it out with that bracket still in place is the tough part. Now with this guy, you gotta make sure there's a notch in one of these teeth and not in the other one. And you wanna remember which way that was facing, which is almost up, probably 11 o'clock from this notch here. And then that way you can put this back in the same way. It will not go in 180 out. So if you're having trouble getting it back in, then try moving this around. You may even need to put a mirror back here so that you can see where your top dead center post is so that that will go back into it. Also, if there's oil all over the bottom of the cast, clearly the O-ring is the culprit. Now for the O-ring, you can kind of see how there's an actual flat edge on this O-ring. That just also is an indicator of how this O-ring has failed. It's no longer sealing against the edges like it should. Because of how deep the groove in this thing is, you definitely want to be careful prying it out. Because if you scratch this groove, it's just going to damage the new O-ring. And that right there is an indicator that this O-ring is definitely bad because of how easily it just snapped. That is not holding oil out anymore. I also like to clean the groove a little bit, get out any debris that may have gotten its way in there because the O-ring was failed. It will let chunks of particles get inside that groove and those particles will prevent the new O-ring from sealing like it should. Now we're gonna take the new O-ring, gently pop it around the edges here and roll it right into place. Now putting this in, there's gonna be some resistance because the new O-ring is back to specs, the size it should be. So try not to force it. You may even wanna put a little bit of fresh oil on the O-ring itself so that it goes in a little easier. And then again, remember to clock your guide ring back to the place it was when you pulled it out and then installation is the reverse of removal so now with our pin pretty much in the spot we wanted it to be in we're going to move it right back in the way we took it out making sure that that pin stays where it was supposed to be and kind of feel where the top is just kind of wiggle it in and that o-ring is going to be tight now there is a possibility when you're pulling it out that you accidentally spin that post around so you definitely want to use a mirror or even your cell phone on video and take a quick video of the back side so that you can see exactly which post is pointed where and now based on the video i can kind of see that it looks like this actually spun around on me so this one needs to be at the top and then hopefully with the right post in the right place so a little bit of oil on the o-ring definitely does the trick it does take a little bit of convincing and then we put our lock bolt back in get it nice and snug make sure your timing marks are still lined up where they should be and then we tighten it down with the 12 millimeter same thing as before if you can't really get a lot of torque onto it you can always extend the wrench do not over tighten you do not want to break this bolt off in the head put our bracket back into place finally reconnect all the wiring don't forget the O2 sensor, and then we test fire it. So clearly that works. So we shouldn't have any more smoke coming out from the engine bay. We also shouldn't have any clutch slip, which is a bonus with these big tires. If you have oil all over the back of your motor, firewall, exhaust, it's probably your cam angle sensor. It may very well be your valve cover gasket as well. So check for oil before you do this. If you see oil anywhere other than the back around the valve cover, do the valve cover gasket as well. I think it's like $27. Most parts stores have them in stock or they can get them next day. Maybe adds another 20 minutes, 30 minutes top to this job but if you have any questions or concerns post them in the comment section below if you liked the video please click that like button subscribe if you want to be notified instantly as soon as i upload a new video and as always guys keep on modding i'm gonna finagle it in there